Hello everybody, Kevin Dennis, Gravitech Systems Incorporated. Welcome back to everybody who's been following us the last couple of weeks. If this is your first time clicking through, every Wednesday for the past several weeks, we've had some short little topic on fall protection rope access or rescue. So thank you very much for attending. I highly encourage all of you to use these little presentations to augment your safety meetings, use them for toolbox talks, use them and incorporate them into your training efforts, anything you can do to spread the word out there to, to protect your people up at heights. I also highly encourage you to type in uh, information or questions into the chat boxes. I'll ask if there's any questions at the end of the session here where you can type in questions live. Uh, but if you're on our YouTube channel uh, or on our website, please feel free to put things into the comment box. Even if you're trolling me, I am still appreciate hearing from you as we gladly uh, uh, or we greatly appreciate everybody's support over the years uh, on our training engineering efforts. So thank you very much, everybody. Make use of the chat boxes. All right. So last week we had uh, a short session on flexible horizontal lifelines and the challenges that uh, they they present, and those two challenges mainly being the clearance, uh, additional clearance requirements because the line deflects or sags as well as the potential for really high loads on the end anchors. So we're kind of going to dovetail into another type of horizontal lifeline, and that's rigid systems. But let's take a look at some of these other flexible systems here to, to start. I want to finish off the topic here on flexible systems. All right, so like I was saying last week, the two big challenges with flexible systems are the additional clearance requirement and the potential for high end anchor loads. So the easiest way around that, or the engineering and design side of it, is phone up the equipment manufacturers and purchase one of their off the shelf components. Now I'm not talking about their uh, lifelines in a bucket or their uh, temporary rope systems. Every manufacturer has got a purpose built product for a uh, fixed or engineered lifeline. Uh, this one up here is key lines, uh, key clamp, uh, next one is uh, 3M Sala, Capital Safety, uh, MSA Latchways, uh, Honeywell Miller. This one here is Uniline, and then XS Platforms. So the nice thing about purchasing one of these is uh, the manufacturers, when you buy them, they put you in cont contact with a uh, uh, certified installer, namely Gravitech Systems. We install and design uh, all of these systems. But, or you have your own qualified person do it. But the nice thing is you plug in the parameters of the line that you're designing. So how far apart are your columns? Are you top of a bridge? Is it a crane rail? Whatever the situation may be, you plug in the parameters, you plug in the number of people. And number one, it spits out a parts list. So from that bolt all the way around to the other anchor, you get a parts list. Um, so your qualified person or engineer, you're not sourcing bolts, turnbuckles, shackles, cables, figuring out how to swage them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's much more efficient from the supply point of view. And just as importantly, the software then spits out what your intermediate anchors have to hold, as well as the end anchors. So to satisfy OSHA's two to one factor of safety, their software uh, puts out the number that will be realized at your end anchor. So all that the certified installer has to do, or your qualified person, is take that number and integrate it into the existing structure. So it's the most efficient way to design a permanent flexible system, okay? So that was just kind of a clean up from last week. Uh, but many times due to clearance or end anchor loads, a flexible lifeline, no matter who it's from, won't work. And that's what brings us to rigid systems. So using a rigid system, you still get all of the freedom of movement of a horizontal lifeline. And actually, some of them are just fantastically smooth. Like that's, that's pretty neat. You know, if you're a worker up at heights, one of the main complaints is the additional equipment, you're tied off to something. So to have a lifeline that, that moves with just the fingers touch is pretty cool. But I digress. So with a rigid system, since you're using rigid material, I don't have the clearance requirement. Okay. But just as importantly, the rigid systems behave differently when it comes to the engineering of the structure. We know that flexible lines, due to uh, the magnification of the loads, you can potentially have end anchor requirements in tens of thousands of pounds. And that doesn't occur with rigid systems. So if I fall on this, the unit locks up, 
whatever this loading is, let's say it was 900 pounds, 450 pounds goes onto that anchor, 450 pounds goes on that anchor. So I can't tell you that rigid systems are safer than flexible systems. They just behave differently. So they're real popular and really good applications for loading and unloading of materials, working on uh, uh, maintenance bays, shops, maintenance garages, bus barns, uh, aircraft maintenance, hangars, because those people up at heights aren't up very high. Uh, switching yards, rail car applications, where you're not high enough to afford the clearance that a flexible system does or requires, you can go to a rigid system. So it reduces your clearance and then it behaves differently in regards to the engineering. And those numbers change as I go closer to the anchor, but for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, the load is just distributed equally to the next two anchors. So I want to show you some, uh, some more elaborate systems, and we'll take a little walk through our GTI here. This is my opportunity to shamelessly sell the place. Uh, you know, when you look around, you won't find many training systems or centers in North America that have got dedicated equipment inspection, a roof anchor system with 25 different anchors that goes from 0 to 12-12, two inside towers, two communication towers, got a monopole, got an aerial lift, I'm walking too fast for my cameraman, <laughs> I've got a wide variety and probably one of the greatest collections of fall protection equipment uh, that you can find here in North America. Uh, the other nice thing about this place, not only is it indoors climate controlled, we've got professional classrooms, uh, and we really focus on experiential learning. So you can see behind me, I've got a wide assortment from, of equipment from a number of different manufacturers. Uh, and you're, when you come here for training, you're allowed to play with it all. You know, that's one of the greatest things, like Christmas shopping, you can try different types of harnesses, different lanyards, different ladder climbing systems, and all the rest of it. So. But the two systems that I wanted to point out here are a couple of rigid lifeline systems. The one up above me here is the Tether Track by Gorbel. It's real popular for um, loading and unloading of materials. Okay? As a, a vehicle can pull into this track here, whether it's a flatbed, barge, rail car, whatever the situation may be, and somebody's loading material into it whether it be by auger, forklift, or crane. But to tarp a load or secure a load or dip, dip a tank, or whatever the situation may be, number one, you're not very high, and the line above what that car can't conflict with the fall protection. Or sorry, that line often conflicts with the loading. So what Gorbel did is the blue line is actually your rigid rail, and there's two box tracks inside of there, and then they're on a cantilever. So the vehicle can come in, it gets loaded, and then before workers get on top of it, it just swings out into place. You lock it in, and then workers bring the self-retracting lifelines down. There's two lifelines, one for each person, and those rails run independently so these people can actually work back and forth from each other, whether they're securing a load uh, or tarping or whatever the situation may be. And these systems can even get a little more elaborate. So that swing arm cantilever system by Gorbel uh, is pretty nice as it will swing and move in and out of the way. And if we look up here into the structure of our training center, you can see there's another system. This is, I always refer to these systems as H systems because of their appearance or their design. But just like an overhead crane, I've got two rails with the box beam and, and connected to those two rails is the aluminum bridge. And on that bridge 
is a self-retracting lifeline, which will follow consensually with a worker as they work back and forth. So this can get quite grand and quite elaborate. So the example that's here in our training center is 50 feet across, 25 foot bridge span, and then uh, uh, 27 foot for the self-retracting lifeline. So, sorry, I'm just aiming for cameras here. So within that 50 by 25 by 27, I can have a worker work through all three of those dimensions, no matter where they are in that, in that cube. So uh, aircraft hangars, military applications, uh, building maintenance, uh, facility maintenance. One system that I'm familiar with was a, a printing press for a national newspaper. If anybody's been into these facilities, you got a newspaper presses that run 200 feet throughout the facility. And at any point in time, a maintenance worker might have to be on top of that anywhere. So rather than have, you know, 300 individually placed anchor points, we can hook, hook, hook up an H system down the superstructure of the building, put the bridge across, and now that worker gets three-dimensional movement. Up and down with the SRD, east and west on the bridge, and then I can even bridge that, move that bridge north and south, you know, whatever span you have it. So, summarize. <clears throat> the horizontal lifelines or rigid systems, I don't have as much clearance. They behave differently. And the, that's the pros, the cons, are they're typically a little more expensive because of the excess or the increase in material. And uh, they're a little more difficult to install just because you're hoisting beams and steel rather than, the, uh, rather than stretching a cable or a line. So if any of this interests you, uh, you be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if this interests you from an engineering point of view, you'd like to crunch the numbers on end anchor loading, clearance requirements for horizontal lifelines. You might be interested in our qualified person class. The next one uh, occurs here November uh, 2nd through 6th. If you're a safety professional or a foreman or lead hand, you might have an interest in our competent person training class. And those occur every month, uh, every sometimes twice a month in our busier times. And the next one here is going to be uh, end of this month, uh, September 25th, 26th, something of that nature. So that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you won't see me next week as we're out on assignment, but you'll see me the week after. Thank you very much.